Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock. It's time for another video. And today I'm going to be talking about the three best Rubik's Cube routines for stage or platform or parlor magicians. This is a question I've had come up over and over and over again. What are the best Rubik's Cube routines if you are a stage performer? Well, the answer, very, very simply, is there's tons of Rubik's Cube routines, but I've sat down, I've thought about it, and these are the best three Rubik's Cube routines. Let's go for it. So I'm going to be including live performance footage of Ryland uh, with these videos, and the reason is Ryland's known as a Rubik's Cube magician, and Ryland pretty much exclusively performs on stage. So we've basically gone through every single Rubik's Cube trick that's ever been created and we've, you know, honed down the ones that work on stage in our opinion and the ones that don't work on stage in our opinion and Ryland's performed all of them at one point or another and, you know, it makes sense to show you some performance footage of Ryland doing it uh, because he performs on stage doing Rubik's Cube tricks all the time. Now, there's a lot of honourable mentions. There's a lot of uh, tricks here that could have made the list that haven't. In fact, we, I might do a follow-up video on this in the future with another three tricks, but stuff like the Vanishing Ink version of Cuban Bottle, the Henry Harrius version of Cuban Bottle, um, the, um, uh, you know, just the new one by Tora Magic Web, where cubes just appear from everywhere. There's a million different routines that could have made this list, but didn't. However, this is the list. These are the three tricks that I think, in order, are the best three tricks that you can use and you can buy if you're wanting to do Rubik's Cube magic in a stage per uh, performance. Now, I will tell you, I'm just trying to think to make sure, make sure I'm not talking stupid. Yeah, all three of these tricks do not require the ability to solve a cube. However, I would strongly suggest that you do learn to solve a Rubik's Cube if you're going to perform Rubik's Cube magic on stage. Because the thing is, when you're practicing, if you mess up, it's going to take you a lot longer to solve the cube. Um, if you don't know how to solve it, you're going to have to use an app in order to be able to do that. And it can get very, very frustrating. And if you mess up in the middle of a performance, I saw Ryland once doing something with a Rubik's Cube and he messed up. He really did. And uh, he screwed the whole thing up. And just in the middle of the performance, he just uh, he just went into a cube solve and he just went and solved the cube legitimately. And then he went back into the act. And that's something that you wouldn't be able to do if you can't solve a cube. So you don't necessarily need to be able to solve a cube. But I think being able to solve a cube is very, very important. With that being said, and without any further ado, let's have a look at the, what the, the trick that I think is the third best trick that you can do with a Rubik's Cube on stage. So this is kind of cheating a bit because this is actually kind of three or four tricks. Uh, it's Ryland's opening um, bit. When he first comes out on stage, this is his opening routine. Um, and it starts off with Venom Cube by Henry Harrius. And then it goes into the throw-up solve from Stephen Brunwich. Then it goes into, uh, but from Cube 3. Then it goes into a behind-the-back solve, again from Cube 3. And it finishes off with Michael Murray's uh, solution, where the spectator solves the cube behind their back. So really, you've got three tricks here. You've got Cube 3 by uh, Stephen Brunwich. You've got Venom Cube by Henry Harrius. And you've got Michael Murray's The Solution. Those three tricks kind of really go together into one act. So I'm going to show you the performance of this and I'll talk about why this is so good. I want to show you the same thing. Using two of the things that I still love the most. Toys, that's the puzzles. So also activate our imaginations. Hi, what's your name? Huh? <laughs> Sheena, can you please show me up on stage? Okay, so here I have a cube. Can you take this cube and start to mix it so I'll explain what's about to happen? Give me a big round of applause for Chino, everybody! So just mix it up and we'll explain what's about to happen. Now magic is all about creating random moments in time that make us go, wow! Tonight I want to hopefully create a few of those moments starting with that cube that you have been mixing. Gina, you've got the cube that's been completely mixed. There are multi millions of combinations as are possible and no one can ever predict exactly how that cube will end up being mixed. Do you want to mix it one more time or is that it? It's okay. Okay, thank you. Now, what I didn't tell you is that these cubes actually match. Look. So number one matches. So number two matches. So number three 
matches. Sign number four, matches. Sign number five, matches. You're not going to believe this, but sign number six, matches as well. Thank you. Now, if you saw me on BGT, you probably would have saw me throw up a cube and it sold. Now, Sheena, you mixed this cube up yourself, didn't you? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw up the cube and it's going to solve. Now, if you saw me on BGT, as I said, you probably would have saw me do this. Now, I'm going to do this on the count of three. One, two, three. Now, the cube. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Now, what if, what if you thought I was cheating? So, if you thought I was cheating, what I'll do is I'll do it behind my back. So, I'll make a cube up and I'll do it one handed. So, Sheena, when I say go, you're going to count to ten, okay? So, I'm going to put it behind my back. I say go, you count to ten. I'm going to do this one handed. Go. <laughs> now, I mean, like, that's pretty good. But there's only one way to make this better. That's you solve a cube behind your back yourself. Okay? Have you ever solved a cube behind your back yourself? Have you even solved it in front of you? <laughs> okay. We'll get back up. So I'm just going to mix the cube up like this. The cube's mixed. Yeah, can you just stand behind me? Just like there. Now, I'm going to explain what I'm going to do. All you're going to do is you're just going to slowly turn the cube like this. You see what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? Yeah, that's what you're going to do. That's that's what you need to do. So if you just stand where I was standing, you're just going to turn the cube just like we said. Okay. So I'll put it here. So, oh, there you go. Just start turning it just like we said. Perfect. Just like that. Now. <laughs> now, whenever you want, well, when you pull that cube out, it could be solved, it could be mixed. But if the cube is solved, the audience will give you a big round of applause. Whenever you want, say stop, but keep the cube behind your back. Okay, now as I said, the cube could be mixed, the cube could be solved, but if the cube is solved, the audience will give you a big round of applause. Sheena, pull out the cube, is it solved? Yes, the cube is solved, give it up to So first of all, this is a great trick, especially as an opener, which is where how Ryland uses it. Um, and, and there's a lot going on and it really does establish credibility that the, the Venom Cube is so strong, that cube matching trick where every single side of the cube solves. It's just impossible when you think about it. They're holding the cube, you're holding the cube, they mix up theirs, you take it back and it solves. It's just a really, really strong moment of magic that just nobody ever sees coming. And people are aware of Rubik's Cubes. They know how difficult they are to solve and they know how many combinations that are possible. They don't know exactly how many, but they know the millions of combinations, right? So when you hand them a cube and they mix it, and that's really important. I've seen sleight of hand uh, versions of uh, match-up routines. I do one with this tattoo and they're great. Don't get me wrong in certain environments like walk around, but when you want people to categorically actually absolutely without a shadow of a doubt know that that cube has been mixed up I think you need to give it to the spectator to mix up I think that's very important and then you've got that moment where very cleanly you can show that each side has matched such a beautiful such a beautiful moment establishes credibility and people immediately realize how difficult it is but then what tends to happen when you do something like that and i know from doing cube magic myself is a lot of the time people will go okay i wonder if you can solve the rubik's cube naturally that's something that happens whenever you do something with a rubik's cube they'll go okay solve it now then so the next phase is the throw up solve because you're showing that you can solve it in a really magical way and that throw up solve i still think that's one of the best solves uh, in magic you know I love it more than the gear solve the one move solve the shape solve I just think that the throw up solve they see you do it right it looks like it solves in the middle of the air it just looks absolutely fantastic so the next uh, part of that is the throw up solve then you've got the behind the back solve now you might say this is a step back but the reason the behind the back solve is in there is to set up for the solution because you're solving it behind your back and then you're asking the spectator if they can solve it behind their back. So the behind the back solve is nice. It might be a slight step back compared to the throw up solve. But then you've got what I think is the strongest way to end this particular act, which is the solution by Michael Murray, where you give them the cube. They mix it up behind the back and they solve it 
behind their back according to the audience. It's such a beautiful, elegant solution. I remember the first time I saw the solution, it was by Stephen Brunwich. Stephen Brunwich did it on TV and uh, it was just, it, it blew me away. I was just like, I saw it on YouTube and I'm like, that just, that just can't happen. That just shouldn't happen. How has, how has he done that? And I was thinking it's a gimmick cube and uh, it, I just couldn't understand it. And then eventually when I learned it, I was just like, oh my God, this is one of the best tricks ever. So yeah, I mean, I'm kind of cheating with this first one because I'm including three different things in there. But if you aspire to do cube magic on stage, getting a, this isn't a very expensive thing to do. It's a Venom cube and that's it. Everything can be done with the Venom cube set because once you've finished with the Venom cube, you put it to one side and then you go into the, uh, you know, you go into the next two bits really really strong really really strong it establishes credibility you've got some really nice visual moments of magic you've got some impossibility you've got an audience member coming up and helping you so it's interactive and it's just a great opening for a show so in third place i would say this particular act which is venom cube the solution and cube three in second place, I'd say Cube Buster by Henry Harris. Now, this hasn't even been released yet. Uh, Henry Harris's Cube Buster got a soft launch at the Black Hole Magic Convention 2023. And anybody that was there will tell you how amazing this trick was. And everybody loved it. Um, but Cube Buster by, um, uh, by Henry Harris is great. It's basically the solve of a 7x7 seven seven Rubik's Cube. And it's really nice. There's no skill required in it, really. It's based off Henry's uh, Rubik's 360, but built into a 7x7, seven seven, which means that you can have lots of revelations built into the cube. Have a look at this performance of Ryland doing it at the House of Secrets so you can see exactly what it's like, and then we'll move on. Now, solving cubes are really hard, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to solve an even hard cube. But well, actually, before I show you what that is, I'm going to get you to pick a card. So I want to pick a card. Do you know what pack card is? Yeah. Yeah. What you're gonna do is you're just gonna just say stop with everyone. Stop. There, that card. That's the card you got. You got it? I'm gonna put it in the middle. Right. Now I'm gonna put the cards back in the pack. Right here. Okay. As I said, I'll show you what this cube is. This cube, as I said, is one of the most hardest cubes. It's a seven by seven. Yeah, very hard. Now, what I want someone to do is I just want them to mix the cube up. Uh, you. You just wanna, you just wanna take the cube like this. Doesn't matter if it's a mess, doesn't matter. Just take it, it's gotta be mixed up, okay? Very big cube, isn't it? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we got this mess. Uh, I'm going to put this in the bag. Once I've scored it, scored it up. Okay. So, black. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try solve this cube. Would that be good? Yeah. Would that be good? What if I said I could solve this cube in less than 10 seconds? Would that be better? Yeah. How about if I could solve this cube in less than 10 seconds with one hand? Yeah. Or if I could solve this cube in less than 10 seconds with one hand without looking at it? Oh, yeah. Well, look. Put the cube inside there. You can see the cube. <coughs> Okay, right. I'll wait, I'll, I'll wait you to count to ten. Um, when I say go, you're all going to count to ten, okay? Go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Done. No way. No way. Can you say what that card is? You had a bit of extra. Uh, well, you see, I had a bit of extra time when I did that, and I put one thing on. Yeah, hearts. <laughs> now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 
So that was Cube Buster, and you saw the reaction from the audience. It always gets a great reaction. And the reason it gets a great reaction is because it's a very strong trick. Ryland's been doing it now ever since Blackpool. Every single show he's put it in. Uh, that, I think, was the set. The performance you saw was the second time he's done it, but he's done it about 10 or 15 times now. It just gets a really strong reaction. I just love that you're building the impossibility. You know, it's nice to have something like this where it's really easy to do. Um, but it's so visual because of the size of the cube, you can do it after another cube routine and it feels like you're moving into another direction. You're feels like you're taking it up a level because you're going from a three by three to a seven by seven. But that whole presentation of if I could solve this, would that be good? What about if I could solve it one handed? What about if I could solve it one handed without looking? What about if I could solve it one handed without looking in less than 10 seconds? That would be great, right? And then you've got that moment where you've solved it, killer reaction. But then you turn it round and you've got the card. And the nice thing is it doesn't have to be a card. It can be absolutely anything. It could be a company logo. There's lots of templates that's included in the project. So we'll be reviewing that at some point soon when it comes out. But I wanted to give it a shout out because even though it's new into Ryland's act, it's instantly for a stage performer. And it's not really a close-up trick, but for a stage performer, it's become one of the you know, it's become a really big part of Ryland's show already. And it's it's probably, I asked Ryland the other day, I think it was his favourite trick that he got from Blackpool this year. And then finally, you have the Cube Wall by Bond Lee. So you got the Cube Wall by Bond Lee and MS Magic. Now, uh, the, the Cube Wall, everybody knows what the Cube Wall is. It's the whole idea of it is that you have a, a wall and you take cubes and you put cubes into the wall. And then the idea is at the end, they've made some sort of pattern. Now, uh, Ryland does this in his show. In fact, on the 5x5 five five that I did recently, you'll have seen Ryland close his show with this. A lot of the time he closes his show with this because it's a nice callback. He opens with cubes. He closes with cubes. It's a really nice, uh, it's a really nice callback. Uh, but he also did it on his audition on BGT. So if you haven't seen that, I'm just going to play that footage. This is Ryland doing it on BGT. And uh, when we've looked at that, I'll talk about what's so good about the cube. On this table over here, I've written over 100 words that describe emotions that people can feel when they watch magic. Amanda, can you please join me up on stage? Yes. On your way up, can you please pick up a piece of paper and look at it? Don't let anyone else see and don't tell me. OK. Can you please sit here? to mix this will I explain what's about to happen. With the help of my friends from the Magic Circle Young Magicians Club. The Young Magicians Club. We're going to do some magic that should hopefully blow your mind. Behind us is a framework containing 16 holes that fit a Rubik's Cube exactly. Each of my friends is holding a Rubik's Cube just like you, they're randomly mixing. At any point, Amanda, I'd like to stop it from your Rubik's Cube. When you do, in a loud voice, please say stop and hold your cube high in the air. Stop. Now, Amanda, mm. there are 200 quintillion ways that a Rubik's Cube can be mixed. All the cubes are mixed in a different way that nobody could possibly know. Everyone in the audience, if you've got a phone, can you please switch the torch on and hold it high in the air? Sometimes I feel like throwing my hands up in the air. I know I can count on you. Sometimes I feel like saying, Lord, I just don't care. But you've got the love I need to see me through.
seeds want space remaining. Do you want to mix your cube some more or leave it as it is? I'm going to leave it as it is. Now, before this all began, when you had first sat down with me, I asked you to pick a word. What was that word? It was love. So I will tell you that uh, that particular cube wall was custom made for Ryland. Well, the cube wall is a cube wall, but we had Guy Barrett make the frame and the stand um, and it packs down really small, but it allows, you know, it allows it to be freestanding on a stage, which is just great because normally with the cube wall, you have to put it on a table or something like that. And if you haven't got a table free, it becomes a little bit of a pain, but having it on a stand like that just really kind of elevates it to the next level. I love that stand. But the cube wall's great. Now, Bond Lee will actually uh, tell you that you can have four of these all put together into a massive cube wall, or you can just have two of them put together. But, you know, you do it right, they just don't know what's coming. Um, the key thing is to make it interesting and engaging because there can be a lot of procedure because you've got like 16 or 24 cubes and there's a lot of mixing up and putting into a thing, which is why when Ryan did it on BGT, you know, it was like getting all the other kids involved and having music and tap it on your shoulder. That was a great way to do it because that kept the energy going. If you went back and look at the 5 by 5 that Ryland did when he closed his show with it, you'll see that he did it in a great way there because it was all done to music and he was doing it very quickly and he was kind of racing against the clock. It's something that you do need to think about, the presentation of this cube wall. But you can custom design it for anybody. I saw Roman Armstrong, who, who's a great magician and does... Uh, the cube wall as well. He put on his Instagram recently that he'd had a uh, booking and it was for a Doctor Who fan and he'd, he'd, he'd done the cube wall and turned it into a TARDIS. The nice thing is that you can really adapt this to whatever the client wants. Uh, and it's one of those tricks that packs relatively small but plays massive. So, uh, so yeah, that's the cube wall. Uh, that's the final one that I want to talk about. That, in my opinion, is probably the best trick uh, with cubes that you can do on stage, in my opinion. So there you go, guys. That's another video in the bag. Do me a favor. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Now, you want to see more videos like this, all you got to do is like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. Now, I'm going to be back again tomorrow at 6 o'clock with another video, uh, another Magic Live, 9 o'clock with another video. Uh, if you want to see more videos, like the video, subscribe to the channel. More importantly, if you want to go check out The Net Tricks, please go to www.thenettricks.com. You can go and see all the fuss is about. And if you want to go and check out my new online shop, it's www magictv.org. I'll be back again soon. Thank you so much for watching. My name's Craig from Magic TV. Mm.